Welcome this evening. My name is Chris Collada. I'm the Planning Project Manager for the Wisconsin Department of Transportation Northeast Region in Green Bay. I'm glad to see we have a very good turnout tonight. I know we're competing with NCAA basketball, so if tonight was a Badger game, I probably would have canceled the meeting. So um, a few things I want to mention before we begin. Um, this is being taped, so if your friends can't be here tonight because they are watching basketball or doing something else, um, De Pere Cable Access TV will be running this periodically. We will be um, linking eventually, I don't know if it'll take a week or two, but we will be taking their um, site and putting it on our DOT WIS32 website also. So the other thing, if you have friends that couldn't be here tonight, we have plenty of comment sheets and we also have newsletters. Feel free to grab some extras, give them to your friends, no problem. So for tonight, I guess I'll just start by introducing some of the DOT, um, MSA, uh, and other staff, city staff that we have. From DOT, we have the Deputy Director, Colleen Harris. We have Brian Brock, the Systems Planning Operations Manager. We have Bob Shermans, one of our traffic engineers. In the back, we have Derek Weyer. He is our planner slash bicycle pedestrian coordinator. We have Trista Fendrick. She will have other projects in the area, so it's good to have her. Um, if your officials or if you live over on the A Street area, you might want to talk to her later on in the meeting. We also have Andy Falser. He's the squad leader for uh, project development projects for DOT. And we have Kim Radat, our communication manager, also for the Northeast Region Office. And I should say my supervisor, Jill Michelson, is in the back corner, the planning supervisor for the Northeast Region. From the city of De Pere, um, we have Eric Rakers, the city engineer, uh, Scott Thornson, the De Pub Department of Public Works director, Ken Pavick's around here somewhere, he's the community development director. Is there anyone else from the city that I'm omitting? They all left, perfect. And then um, from MSA professionals, we have Mike Stotts, he's the project manager for MSA for this project, Kevin Rulin is our traffic engineer. And Jamie Curtin is another engineer working on the project. So for tonight, I'll try and stay out of your way over here. I covered the introductions, and, and tonight is really the first opportunity that the public has had the chance to hear these alternatives. We don't have anything set in stone. So if you don't like certain things or you like certain things, you like how the corridor works now, you want to see things change, this is an early start in the process. Then we'll go through with overview, study purpose, schedule study updates, discussion of alternatives, questions. We'll take general questions and then if we start to repeat ourselves or if it's very specific questions, then we'll break into the rest of the public information meeting and DOT staff would love to talk to, to everybody tonight. So overview, why are we doing this? Why are we having this meeting tonight? Basically, um, DOT through our, has identified the, the pavement condition is starting to deteriorate. There's parts of Main Avenue that's 60 years old, and typically it's about 40 years that pavement, um, the existing pavement lasts. So the combination of the pavement condition and the utility condition is why we're starting to plan for this. I say plan for this. DOT has a six-year program map, and it's over by Bob. It says Brown County. Right now, the... This study area is not in the six-year program, and, and we're okay with that because we want to come out and meet with the public. We want to talk to the business community. We've already talked to St. Norbert a little bit about some of their plans. We also have a stakeholder group. So we're not coming in to surprise and say this is DOT's plans. This is as early as you get. We don't even have the project program, but as we go through the study process, by July of 2014, we hope to have 30% plans and there's some details and we'll get into a lot of the alternatives. We're gonna hopefully start moving towards a, a reconstruct level project. Now, one thing that is program, well actually I'll, I'll go into the project purpose first. Some of the things that we're looking at is to develop a typical cross section. So it's, what's the footprint? We only have so much right away for Highway 32. So you have parking, do you have bike lanes, how many lanes do you have? What are the future needs that we have out here? And then we're gonna look at different traffic patterns. And then intersection operations. What works well, what doesn't work well? And we'd love to hear your thoughts as drivers and, and residents of De Pere. 
And then we're also going to look at exploring bicycle, pedestrian, tr and transit options. And then we'll, we'll be investigating the existing railroad bridge. How many people know the three-lane railroad bridge? It's kind of a bottleneck, two lanes westbound, one lane eastbound. Not many. I guess we don't have to look at it. Perfect. No, I'm kidding. Um, we will be looking at it. We have heard loud and clear from the stakeholders. We have heard from the city, and that's part of the reason why we're doing the study is to look at the cost-benefit analysis of some railroad options. We're not going to get into that tonight, but we are working on that, and we plan on bringing that back at a future public meeting. And then we're also identifying the utility replacements. And schedule updates. Thanks for coming. This is the first step. This is our first public information meeting. We're going to be planning some community outreach. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do, but we've been partnering and working very well with the city, and I definitely appreciate their help. We're probably going to be bringing some of these alternatives as we refine them to farmers markets, maybe celebrate De Pere, maybe we'll be coming to the county fair. There will be other opportunities, and not just at public meetings, where people are going to big events, and you might see a booth, stop by, hopefully say you like all our alternatives, but if you don't, share your perspective. And then we're going to go into 30% um, plans, like I mentioned, by July 2014. And here was the map that I was talking about before. The study corridor is basically 3rd Street down by the bridge or St. Norbert College, and it goes out to Oak Street on 8th Street. And what I mentioned about 8th Street, originally we, we did a media kickoff back in September of 2011, and, and the study team's really been gathering a lot of data in the, in the last year. But the city had requested, they had said, hey, A Street, it's more of a simple reconstruct level project. It doesn't have all the complexities that we have in the downtown area with the on-street parking in the downtown. So right now we have, and this is based on funding availability. Things could happen that the project could move up, the project could move back. But there is a reconstruct level project on A Street, and that's scheduled for 2018. And that Andy Falser and Trista Fendrick, they'll be the leads for that. And they'll have separate meetings. Um, we're probably going to be piggybacking your project on the WIS32 website also. So it's just another way that we can get information out to the public. And with that, I'm going to turn over to Mike Stotts from MSA. Thanks, Chris. Uh, well, the thing I wanted to get into is just what, what, what have we been doing since we started this project? Well, we knew that there, there's a lot of things happening through the downtown area of De Pere. Got a lot of traffic, got a lot of businesses, we got parking, we got historical buildings, we have a lot of needs through that corridor. So we really wanted to make sure that we understood those, gathered that information so that we could start studying all the alternatives that are there. So we've done a lot of work with the traffic, um, doing counts, figuring out some of the traffic flow, analyzing all that information, taking a look at the crashes. Why are those crashes happening? What are some things that we could do to maybe help so that we, we avoid some of the crashes through this corridor? Uh, you probably saw our, our, um, our, um, our rigs out there that they were doing some borings for the pavement and, and some of the substructure units with the uh, retaining walls and, and, and the railroad bridge. We've had some initial coordination with the businesses in the downtown area. We've had uh, utility and agency coordination. We need to understand what's out there, what needs to be replaced, how deep is it, um, so that we can start figuring out how, what the footprint is and, and how much impact we're going to have along the corridor. Uh, Chris talked about the project website. This is something that uh, we're trying to get the information out to everybody so that they can see what uh, the alternatives are. You know, Chris mentioned that if you're not able to make the meeting today, you know, or you know people that weren't able to make the meeting or you want to follow up and look at something, please visit the DOT website. We're going to try to keep that up to date with our alternatives and some of the investigation that we're doing. And then Chris talked briefly there about the railroad coordination. We know that we need to take a look at that railroad bridge. It, it is um, um, a process that anytime you're dealing with, with the railroad that it does take a, a little bit longer. Um, so it's something that we're working very closely with the railroad so that we can come up with an alternative that will work for the city of De Pere and DOT and, and uh, its residents. Um, I, I talked about um, all the things that are in the downtown. This, um, we feel that this is a good example here. If you want to get a balanced design through your downtown area, what are some of the things that all go into this? And this, this little pinwheel here really shows a lot of the, a lot of the um, um, items that, that are needed in this downtown. But you only have so much width from building to building. So it's not like we can fit six lanes of traffic down in this area. It just doesn't make sense. So we know that parking is very important. We know that the sidewalks are very important. We know that the, 
the, the, the atmosphere uh, of the downtown is very important. So those are things that, that we're taking very seriously. But we need to look at beyond just the livable community. We need to look at our environmental constraints, some of the design standards, real estate impacts. Um, there are historical properties along this corridor that we need to take into consideration. So those are the things from the DOT standpoint that we need to make sure that we're following certain uh, federal highway guidelines as, as we go through. Um, and, um, but you know, safety, bicycles, pedestrians, all, all very important, but we need to fit all those items in, into our design as we move forward. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into the alternatives here. You know, we've, we, we've looked at quite a few different alternatives, trying to come up with a, a, a balanced design that meets all the uh, needs and desires of, of, of the downtown. So um, the, the first item here, and I will say that all these exhibits that I'll be going through on the PowerPoint are boards that we have up around the room. So when the presentation's done, if you want a closer look at some of the boards or ask more specific questions about each one of these alternatives, please grab uh, one, one, of, one of us uh, from the DOT, MSA, or the city, and we can, we can talk to you more specifically about those projects. And as we go through these alternatives here, because we know that parking is so important in the downtown, you'll see that we'll have a comparison there of existing parking spaces and then how much the proposed, this alternative may impact with your parking. So that's something that we took pretty seriously as we looked at our alternatives. How can we find um, some ways to save as much parking as possible along the project? That's been very important in our process. So the first alternative here is basically taking the existing configuration that's out there and trying to improve some of the intersection um, uh, traffic flow so that, that uh, we, we meet some of the minimum standards that, that we have to, to, to go with. Uh, that did impact a little bit of some of the intersections and everything, um, but again, very similar to what's out there now, but just improved intersection geometrics and intersection traffic flow. So we, do, we did have um, uh, some loss of, of parking in that um, as, we, as we analyzed that. Alternative two was an alternative that um, we felt we really needed to look at because we felt that we, we may be asked this question, what if we converted Main Avenue and Reed Street back to two-way streets instead of the one-way street option? So this is what alternative is, alternative two is, it provides on Main Avenue two lanes of traffic in each direction, and for, for Reed Street it provides a one lane of traffic in each direction. As you can figure um, with that, the most direct route to the bridge or from the bridge is just to continue on Main Avenue. So there is a large impact along Main Avenue for this alternative. Um, there, there's a lot of needs at the intersections with the turning movements and everything that's going on. It, it has a, quite a large impact and you can see that with the net change in, in the number of parking stalls that are there. Alternative three, this is one that, um, um, that we worked with the city and the DOT on because when we were up here, analyzing the traffic, it, um, and, and we did a lot of our traffic counts, it was pretty clear to us that 3rd Street and 4th Street almost act as a one-way pair right now. It's almost like a two-thirds, one-third as far as south to north um, uh, with, um, with, with those two streets. So we said, well, what, what if we made those, that um, made 3rd Street and 4th Street one-way pairs similar to how Main Avenue and Reed Street are one-way pairs. How does that help us? Uh, how does that help the traffic flow? How does that improve um, the, 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 the impact to the parking as we move through there? Um, this one had um, probably, um, of, of the alternatives, and there's pros and cons with all these alternatives, but just looking at the parking itself, this alternative here had the least impact uh, to, to the parking. Uh, um, alternative. Now the one thing that I, I will talk about and I really would like you guys to come up and look at some of the boards and it's the second, bo uh, the second board from, from the right there that looks at as you're coming westbound on Main Avenue and you want to take a left turn onto 4th Street. That is a heavy movement. There are a lot of vehicles that make that left turn um, and, and I'm sure you guys have maybe been stuck waiting to, to make that, that left turn. That's something that, that we've been looking at, um, trying to find a way to make sure that we, we can leave as much parking in as, as possible. So that's something that we're still looking at. 
Um, one of the options would be that, hey, we know that in the morning, the a.m. peak hour, there are a lot of left turns. That's the biggest impact. So what if we um, had some restricted parking that there was no parking in that one area in, in just the morning and we allowed, allowed it um, after that peak hour movement. So um, when you look at these alternatives, realize that we, this is very early on. We are trying to fine tune it. We're trying to find better ways to make the designs better. But that's one of the things that we are definitely looking at is how to make that left turn lane operate better without having to lose a lot of parking. Alternative four is what we ref refer to as a reverse flow circulating lane. Now this is the alternative that was in the city's downtown master plan. And basically what that provides is it provides one lane counter flow. So on Main Avenue, you would have one lane going eastbound towards the bridge. On Reed Street, you would have one lane going um, <clears throat> westbound um, uh, toward, towards 41 there. So um, similar to the, um, the, the option where we provided two-way uh, two traffic on Main and Reed Avenue, as you can figure that the intersections become, again, the, the concern there because we do have a lot of turning movements and to get those intersections to operate effectively, we do have some impact on there. Um, so there, there's a little bit, again, pros and cons with all these alternatives here, but this one does have a, a large impact with, with parking. Uh, then another alternative we were asked to look at then here is the alternative five, which is kind of the modified reverse flow circulating lane. What if we only did the, re on Main Avenue, only did that um, reverse lane to Fourth Street? What, what does that help um, that uh, alternative? And again, we, we took a look at that. It helped it a little bit. Um, you can see the reduction in, in the, the number of parking stalls that were lost, but it still had, still had a large impact on there. So again, as you look at all these alternatives, realize pros and cons for each of them, trying to balance a lot of different things in a small area. So it does take, take some, some um, options there to try to come through with all those. Um, some of the things that we looked at here, now let's just look at specific intersections here. One of the alternatives um, that we looked at was that we saw is when um, 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 the staff or uh, delivery trucks needed to get to the mill, that they would come on, on Highway 32, they'd come down to Reed and then come up Fifth to get into the plant. Well, that causes, causes some impact and, and more congestion at these two intersections with, with Fifth Street. So just an option that we had presented to the, to the city, just said, hey, think about this. What if we provided a different access route to the, to the paper mill? And if we turned left at 6th Street and improved that alley into more of a, a public street, you would take a lot of that truck traffic and, and, and staff traffic out of the 5th Street intersections and, and taking it up to, to 6th Street. Now, that does help us with the, the parking. We do gain some parking back with, with that alternative. So, um, but again, these are just ideas that we're throwing out there that, that show improvement for traffic operation and improvement for, for parking. Um, you know, where, where we go with that alternative, that's the feedback that we're looking for tonight from, from the public um, so that the city and the DOT can, can help make that decision there. The other thing was looking at 3rd Street. Um, you guys have probably seen it more than I have. I've, we've been out there looking at this intersection for a while and I'm just, um, I'm, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm always a little bit of afraid when I watch the pedestrians cross at that crosswalk right there because um, they, they start going out and maybe the first car stops for them, but the second car doesn't stop. And I, I wonder how many near misses I've seen uh, when we've been analyzing that, that intersection there. So some of the things that we looked at is we could probably look at um, signalizing the Third Street intersection and then provide a mid-block um, crosswalk with, with some bump outs there. And that ties into some of the, the walkways from the, from the parking lots. A couple things that does for us, it does provide a little bit more traffic calming for the, the vehicles that are coming from the bridge into the downtown area. Right now, a lot of those vehicles come very fast off of the bridge into the downtown area. So there's some ways that we can slow down that traffic, not only for safety of, of the vehicles themselves, but for the pedestrians, I think are more important. And I, I think part of the um, item with um, the pedestrians there is that the cars are not anticipating that there's gonna be a pedestrian crossing there. Now, if it was up at the intersection, where the, the signals were, they would be understanding that there might be pedestrians there. So those are some of the things that, that we've looked at, just trying to improve safety 
trying to do some of that traffic calming um, along the corridor and still provide good access. Then we're gonna, we're gonna jump up to, to 8th Street. And um, this was an intersection that when we were doing our crash analysis, um, a lot of crashes at, at this intersection here because I'm sure you guys have all seen it. The, it's a shared um, through and left turn lane. And so if someone was gonna turn left, you're gonna see people trying to get over into the right lane to go around them. So we've seen side swipes, we've seen rear end crashes. And so what we're, um, we, we took that and took a look at the traffic and we're making some recommendations for that is to add um, an extra lane. And again, all these boards are, are up here if you want to come up and look closer. But we're adding each leg of the intersection will have its own left turn lane. And that'll get the, those movements out of there so that we're not having that weaving that's occurring um, with people trying to get around those left turn lanes. Uh, we did look at, um, you know, there, there's a lot of roundups, uh, roundabouts in the, in the De Pere area. You know, we did analyze that for this intersection. Um, it just didn't, just didn't fit. Um, had a large impact real estate wise, and we could make our, um, our level of service work with this traffic signal. So we're, that's what we're recommending is putting a traffic signal back up there, adding uh, a left turn lane for each movement. And then also, we're going to remove the, um, that little island that, that's uh, right by the mobile gas station there. Um, uh, with, with that being a, f the existing is kind of a free flow right turn lane al almost, and you see that there are pedestrian safety issues with that type of movement. So we're gonna square it up, and um, we, we have enough uh, t cycle time in this intersection there that the pedestrians can still cross in their, um, in their, uh, their cycle there where they have the, 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 the walk sign there. So, uh, that's a recommendation that, that we're making. I think that'll help that intersection quite a bit. Um, one thing that um, in all these alternatives, we have to be thinking bike lanes also. So we do have that in, in, in this intersection and all the alternatives that, that we've talked about is having an on-road bike lane. And I think that's uh, something that uh, you'll see, you're seeing a lot more with DOT projects, actually a state law that uh, Trans 75 that we need to look at at bike lanes uh, in pedestrian uh, sidewalks with every project that we do. So I, I think that's important and uh, something that we're looking to add with every alternative that we have. And then, um, you know, Chris kind of talked about this before here. Um, additional alternatives. You guys may have some ideas. And so we actually have um, blank aerial maps like this at our sign in tables when you guys came in. If you want to grab one of those maps, take it home with you, draw it up, send it back to us. You know, th those are the things we need to hear. You guys live and drive this, this area every day, and you may have some ideas. So we're, we're very open to it. We want to hear it. Uh, we know there's maybe other alternatives out there that may work just as well as what we proposed or, or better. So we want to hear from you guys too. So that's, that's uh, part of our public involvement process that we're looking at. And again, the, the, the contact information, I'll put another um, word out there for the, for the website. Uh, that's something that uh, if you have questions on things or you want to direct one of your neighbors or friends to that website, it definitely has some great information and, and Chris is guaranteed it's always going to be up to date. <laughs> um, Chris's contact information and then um, uh, Chris mentioned there that we, we are definitely partners with the city of De Pere on this. They've been involved, heavily involved in, in all of our discussions there. So Eric Rakers, uh, the city engineer, is the, the contact for the, for the city. And so um, with that, um, that is the, the, the end of our, our presentation. Um, and so I would um, open it up that if, if anyone had general questions about the project, we can take those now. If you have ones that are more specific to a certain alternative or to a certain area, um, you know, grab one of us and let's just go up to the board. It'll probably work out uh, much better that way. Chris, anything you would like to add? Just that there are some tables in the back, so if you want to make comments, you can fill them out there. We do have comment tables, and then we also have the prepaid envelope, so feel free to grab them from either table. I guess for the, those diehard gamers, we'll probably turn the TV band back in the <laughs> back of the room, so if you're interested in the game, that's fine. But I just thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules and coming and at least learning about the study and what we're doing and where we're going forward, because it's, it's vital rather than waiting to the end and people saying, I didn't know about this, I had no idea this was coming. And feel free to share it with your friends. If there's questions, Eric or myself, um, 
we're, we're happy to meet with groups if, if it comes down to that. But otherwise, we have the website, and, and we're, we're trying to do different ways to reach out to the public. And I do want to thank the city for reserving the facility for us and for all the setup that they've done for our stakeholder and this community meeting. Yes? Um, but you have to use the microphone. Um, when they, when they were, were having these uh, uh, public information meetings for the Mason, uh, 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 Mason roundabouts and, and construction, they had an, e an email sheet you could sign up for that they, they automatically sent you the uh, updates and, and what was going on. Is there any chance you guys could do that? Because that was really cool. I did not put her in the front of the room, but excellent, <laughs> thank you. If you go on to our DOT website, and the newsletters that you all have should have that on there. Um, the DOT website for the WIS32 study, correct, thank you Carl. It is on there, and there's a, on the upper right box, it says click if you wanna be on our email update list. So, yes, we can do that. I guess the, the, the one thing, um, Mike was making a joke. Sometimes it does take us a little bit to get stuff onto our website. I'm gonna try and add information every month, but sometimes there's a lot of projects and there's a queue to wait. But right now, I would anticipate the alternatives you see tonight, most of them should be on our website in the next one to two weeks. So we put that out there. We're also gonna have, um, if people have comments after reviewing the alternatives on the website, an email link that goes right to me. And then I'll share that with the study team. So yes, we do have that. Any other questions? Uh, how long have you been studying the traffic plan before you came up with all these alternatives? The, the question was, how long have we been studying the traffic flow before we came up with the alternatives? I will say before the study process. If, if a lot of you remember the Claude Alway Bridge, it went from two lanes to four lanes. Some of these alternatives that came up were actually, I had sat down with the previous project manager, Chuck Carroll, and like the, the two-way traffic on Main Street, that came up as part of the Claude Alway Bridge. Now, the Claude Alway Bridge only really dealt up to about third and then it stopped, so it wasn't the place to deal with it. So the other thing is a lot of these recommendations come from the city comprehensive plan and master plan. So some of these most of these are not even the study team's ideas. These aren't our ideas. These are other ideas that have been in other documents that say they need further analysis in the future. Now's the time because we have an upcoming reconstruct project. But how long have we specifically for this? What we've been doing since I was assigned this project, um, we started, we kicked this off with a media event. It was September 2011. Okay. So about that time frame. You know, I would, I would add. Um, sure. Sure. I would add that uh, you know we did take a look at some of the historical data and then along with what the city's um, downtown plan is that we know that there is some some redevelopment that that's that's planned to occur too so those are things that we take into consideration also that we know that there might be some redevelopment there might be some different traffic flow going on there and um, we, we did a quite extensive um, traffic study to make sure that we understood um, how much traffic was coming where is it going and, and where is it coming from as and we when did that. It's going. And yeah, and, and when is it coming and when is it going? You bet. Any other questions? Now that they put that new CVS pharmacy up on that corner, have you guys did a traffic pattern on that? You want you can yeah. take it? Um, what what we did is that um, Sir, what what Oh, sure, yep, thank you. Um, the, the question was now that CVS Pharmacy has, has been put in there, have we looked at the traffic since then? And we, the, the, the counts that we did um, um, were, were before CVS was, was, was built, but because of the type of, of building that is, we know that um, we've included the traffic in our future projections as we move forward, just like we would with the redevelopment. So those are things that we know that, hey, these things are changing, these things might be coming up in the future, and we have um, some of the traffic information we have. We know how much traffic those types of buildings may, may generate, and so we include that in our future projections. Great question. Any others? Going once, <laughs> going twice. Thank you very much for coming, and yeah. we'll now reconvene the public information meeting. Thank you.